My Kabuki <laughs> Valentine. Oh, my Kabuki Valentine. I don't know. What does Kabuki mean? <laughs> I don't know. It's a type of theater in Japan. Oh, I see. Mm, well, it's my little Valentine right? who hangs around the theater. <laughs> Oh, I'm Laban Johnson. I'm Larry Bly. This is Cooking Cheap in Japan today, or the Cook oh, really? Sisters are. Uh, yeah. Have we taken this set? Oh, yeah, to we're Japan turning and... Japanese. Oh, yeah, turning Japanese, returning Japanese. Returning Japanese. Japanese. That's We've wonderful. Done that before. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, we're here to enlighten your day or night, depending on when you're watching. We've this. never enlightened <laughs> anybody, Laban. And maybe Get off. entertainment. You know, Light. Blair, hmm? it occurred to me that, you know, while people are working in their kitchen, mm. The two parts of your body that you neglect that you need to take care of, <laughs> your hands and your feet. Oh, in oh, the kitchen. oh, boy, there for and, a minute I was. Well, you oh. know, we, we, we always try to pass these little helpful tips along. Mm. Yeah. If you've been on your feet all day baking gifts for people or whatever you're doing or a very complicated recipe and your dogs are barking and your feet just hurt so bad, the best thing to do is go and sit down and take off your shoes and your uh, socks or your hose and rub a little mentholated spirits like uh, vapo rub on the bottom of your feet and it just <laughs> zips them right up. They feel wonderful. I'll swear. And you'll just dance and do right. the rumba and the cha -cha. And if you've been doing a lot of dishes and things in the kitchen or you've been messing around in the flour and your hands are dried out or burnt, the best thing to do there is to mix together in your hand just a few little bacon drippings mm. and some sugar and wring your hands in that. Just rub them real good and that'll restore your hands instantaneously. Your hands will be refreshed. Where did you learn all of this? Well, <laughs> I found them in a little book on how to take care of yourself that I got in England uh -huh. this year. Well, mm -hmm. that's real neat. That's what the English do. Have you noticed the strange assortment of uh, dishwashers that we have had on these programs the I last know. couple of weeks? Uh -huh. You thought you had sneaked it by on yeah. me back uh -huh. there. Yeah. <laughs> yes. You watch for it. Face, uh, what was it? Prune face, what was it? Prune face, somebody. You know. watch for it at the end of the show. We have some rather uh, an unusual well, assortment Well, I think it's people. terrible that our crew has left us and have, <laughs> and they have to taken the buying people. people off the street <laughs> <laughs> to do it. Let's go over here and see what we can All do. Right. I've got something in the broiler, and I hope it hasn't broiled to death. Let me look and see. Well, you can't see. You're too... It's <clears> too <throat> high for me. I'm oh. going to make yakitori. I beg your yakitori. pardon? Yakitori. And while he's messing around back there, I'm heating up some oil. Now I'm going to quick fry some things. This basically is, is, is chicken and... Uh, boneless breast or if you you've got if if you got a lot of time you can buy the breast with the bone in it but you have to take it out you'll save a lot of money you'll save about 50 percent oh look at this Dinah Shore is in this oh did you ever oh for goodness a sake. picture of Dinah came with this oh. chicken I don't know what's it mean I don't know the singing chicken I'd hate to there she is I'd she's not the chick up in a <laughs> she's not the spring chicken she used to be but there she is what does it say Oh, it's got little. Oh, it's got little recipes. Uh, little in it. recipes. I'll I'll hold on to that. Oh, it was up against the chicken. I just remember. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's terrible. Oh. So anyway, we've got these uh, boneless breasts. Really, you can save about fifty percent on the cost of chicken if you buy it with the bones in it and debone it yourself. But I'll just be honest. I've never been too debonair, so I have just. Oh. Oh hell. Perfectly awful. I believe the natives are a tad bit rude uh, today. <laughs> so anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cube these. I'm going to cut them up. They're real nice and thin. They're like little chicken steaks, and I'm going to cube them into little cubes. And then in a couple of minutes to that mess, I'm going to add uh, some the favorite part of everyone here at the TV station that they're all looking for, and that is chicken livers. We're going to uh, bone some of those up in just oh, a little bit. So we've in the lost meantime, something, Bly. What have we lost the now? The strainer. The strainer. That high-priced new strainer. Oh, Lord. Where is it? Now, I I'm just making little air. cubes. Well, isn't it? Oh, here it is. There it is. He gets real nervous. I remember when we first started the show six years ago, he never got nervous about anything. Sometimes he didn't even know he was on the air. But now he just gets real nervous. Now, see, I'm just cubing those up into little cubes. Aren't they just doll babies? It's just adorable. 
and that's what I'm going to do for a couple of minutes. So Laban, you may want to okay. Well, tell I'll them show everybody what, what we're doing. I'm doing sukiyaki, and uh, this dish can be done with beef. Oh, what's burning? Your uh, wok it has it gone can, up. It can be. Uh, this stuff can be done with uh, beef, chicken, or seafood. I'm using shrimp today, so I've got some raw, and unpeeled shrimp. And speaking of shrimp, I have a surprise for you, Mr. Johnson. I have the granddaddy shrimp of them all from the boy, does this one have a gland problem department, ladies and gentlemen, comes a real, honest, have you ever in your life seen anything like that? That is one big <laughs> shrimp. <laughs> <laughs> that is a shrimp. Good grief, look at that baby. And that is from Calcutta. They bring them An in Indian here. Indian shrimp. Kroger is the only place I know around here that has them. Well, Lord, have And mercy. they got them, and some lady was buying a whole bunch of them. She said she was going to feed her whole family on four of them. Well, let me uh, put it over here on the fire while I'm talking about the other stuff, and we'll uh, see how it does here. Now, um, in addition to the shrimp in the sukiyaki, which no! is what we're doing here, uh, I'm also using bean curd, and here is the bean curd. And uh, this is cut into slices, and this is what I'm broiling right now in the oven. So it'll be finished in just a few minutes. I'm also going to use these noodles. These are cellophane noodles, and uh, they're real thin rice vermicelli. And they're going to go in hot boiling water for two minutes. I'll also be using uh, green onions cut into two-inch lengths. You know what I discovered a while ago? What? I discovered that not too many people know what cellophane noodles, noodles are. are. They all thought I was absolutely stark raving mad. I was running around trying to find cellophane noodles. And I have some of this Chinese cabbage that's going to be cut into pieces that will be going into it, along with some dried mushrooms that I've got soaking back here, some stock, and some sherry. Now, what happens is, my friends, that uh, we're going to do each item one at the time, then we're going to throw a stock into the pan, and then you eat and add more things to it as you go along. So this is sort of a, a continuing dish, and uh, it could be served right at the table over a little burner uh, thing. So that this is what we're going to be doing over here. Larry, now, now, ladies and gentlemen, a startling close-up, if you would please, of Laban's face. Right here. No, right here. A startling close-up, like <laughs> oh <laughs> come on, Bly. from the cheap How trick rude. of the <laughs> there he is. It's oh, it's the chicken liver that ate Chicago. There it is. And what I'm doing is just cutting them in half, basically. They're very, very difficult to work with at this time of the day. <laughs> I don't know what that means. I just thought I'd say it. What I'm doing is trimming a little of the glob off the edges of it so that we have real nice pretty ones that are easy to handle. Isn't that lovely? Mm -hmm. It's just real pretty. A lot of people are right squeamish about putting their hands in this stuff. Like that camera girl back there. Oh. She's backed off she 20 nervous? paces since I started this. Well, yeah, mm -hmm. especially since that episode a couple of years ago where one got loose and flew up into the lens. <laughs> you know, oh, I forgot to remember that. that. Uh -huh. <laughs> we have put everything into these cameras down through the years. It can be no wonder they. Well, never mind. Well, okay. <laughs> now what we're doing is just having these, basically. You're having. Them. It says that you're supposed to having cube these, uh, Miss Johnson. Yeah. And I'd like to know how do you cube uh, a well, chicken liver? Just... Would you please tell me that? I mean, this is the best I can do. They're just sort of oozing around here. Now I've heated this heat up, I've heated this oil up real hot. I'm probably going to burn these things, they've been going for too long. And what I'm going to do is put both of them in there right now and we're going to quick fry them for uh, three to four minutes. Woo! They are, they're too hot. That stuff is fiery hot. Let me see how I'm going to pull it off just for a couple of minutes. Probably a good idea to salt and pepper them at this point if you want to. Doesn't say anything about it, but I'm going to do it anyway. And I have to wash my hands because this is just too much for me. Are you using the uh, sugar and drippings? For what? For your hands. No, no, I just don't have time. Oh. I'll put a little pepper on there. However, that did rub something on the feet before it went on here. But I did forget to wash my hands. No, I'm only kidding. 
All right, now we'll put that on there. We just want to do these for about, oh good, that's just right. About three to four minutes. Just brown them a little bit, okay? You don't want them to be raw. That's another one of the reasons, by the way, that you can cube them, is so that they will fry a little bit more evenly, a little faster. Laban? Okay, now, Lair, I've got my big shrimp in here, and the heat got turned down. Ugh, you know how it is in the kitchen when everything goes wrong. Here's my tofu. Where is it? Uh, this is the tofu that has been broiled, and it's just like little pieces of toast. And this is a uh, soybean curd, and this will go into the dish in just a little while. And this big shrimp is cooking right along, and I'm going to take it out here because we've got to do the little one. Now I'm just going to throw in a handful of little shrimp. Be my little yakitori baby. Now, there we go. Oh, it's smelling so good. Now here goes the, these are just medium sized shrimp and as soon as you put them in you begin to notice that they're turning colors already. And while they're in there, to just add a little flavor to it, we're going to add some sherry. You probably should use Japanese rice wine. I've got a couple of tablespoons full of sherry. And that'll help that do real well. And I'm going to throw in some soy sauce. This is about a quarter cup of soy sauce. The sauce of the soy. Oh, thank you. I needed some more water. Yeah, I know. We did have to replenish We're our just supply. drying out just real bad. It's just Where's the terrible. sugar? Where's the what? The sugar. I have it. Oh, good. I need just a little bit. There you go. I want just a tad of sugar in this. So we're going to put about a tablespoonful of sugar sprinkled on there. Oh, a tablespoon. Now, I'm going to have trouble down the road here because this water is taking so long to boil. That looks like little parameciums in there. Well, but it'll kill them. Once they get to boiling, those little things just dry up. Excuse me. Help yourself. Now my shrimp this are is so much turning fun. shrimp colored. I coral. like to do this on television sometimes. What? Now my shrimp color is turning shrimp colored. Yeah. Dude. I'm in now a singing I'm mood today. Take some of this bean curd and cut it into smaller pieces here. If it'll be still. And I'm going to throw that down in here into the. Boy, it sure has been a long three to four minutes, hasn't it? Oh, Boys what, and for girls. What? Yeah, for this. <laughs> well, what has happened is I've loaded it up with just a little bit more than, a, than you needed. Than I needed to. Because I know everyone's here on the floor is going to be gone after this chicken liver as soon as the program's over. So I have laid on extra supplies. Okay, now I've got my bean curd in there, and I'm going to throw in a handful of Ooh. my onions. Cut that down a little. And let me get over here and work on this uh, cabbage, tear off some of these outer One leaves. good thing about this kind of food is it smells good instantly, and it's so good for you. Now, with my Chinese cabbage, we're going to cut it like this at the end. and throw that in and stir, fry it around. Ooh, that is so pretty. And now I've got the tofu, the green onions, and the cabbage in there. How come you didn't pull the stuff off of the, the shrimps before you did them? Uh, so that they'll have a real good shrimpy flavor. Oh. Now these are the dried mushrooms. Well, what that if we forget them and accidentally eat them that way? Well, I guess you'll instantly know that you have uh, screwed up once again. It's just so rude to me. <laughs> Six years of this. Now these uh, dried mushrooms, I'm going to cut th them up into some smaller pieces and throw them in.
I'm still frying these because these things are a little red on the inside. Oh, I think they're all right. They're coming along though. All right, now th there's everything that I've got to have except the chicken broth. And let me see if I can find a can opener. Do you have a can opener, sir? I have a can opener. Hang on, I got to go to the uh, basement uh, to get it. Uh, all right, while he's doing that, let me quickly give this another little turn. Thank you very much. much. It's a very close by basement. Now, Larry, this is the chicken broth, and as soon as I throw this in, and I just need a little bit, I don't I'm just going to put a half a, about a half a cup in. That's all. And this dish is ready. Oh my goodness! Look. What? I, all he our has fine, ruined our fine plastic. Plastic has uh, become burned. Handle on it has been melted down the side of his walk. Now, oh. let me make ah, room down sweat. in here for our big shrimp. Make room. For, I for am our, just dying to big, know. I'll bet you that thing's as tough as an old cow. What? This big shrimp? That big not shrimp. A, not if it's cooked properly. You think not? No. Oh, I don't want to put that there. It'll there was burn. some school teacher ahead of me that knew you, said she was going to try it and report back to you. Oh, no. She recognized me at the meat counter, I those, mean, the seafood counter. Those uh, school teachers are a rowdy bunch. She was buying a whole bunch of them for a family. Mm -hmm. All right, now, Larry, this is all ready to go, so I'll get a bowl from down in the basement. Are, are you ready? I think I'm you ready are. to go okay. back here and well, do you something. Going back while I. One Put time, mine baby. In the serving bowl. What we're going to do now that we have quick fried these for three or four minutes, <laughs> twice that amount, we're going to make a little marinade. So what we're going to do is take a quarter of a cup of sugar. Dunk. It would be nice if I had a spoon. Quarter cup of sugar, a third of a cup of soy. Sauce. Thank you. A uh, quarter of a cup of sweet sherry. And you know she is sweet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she really is. Sweet sherry. Where is it? That, give or take a quarter of a cup. There it is. A little of that. And a half a cup. You can use one of two recipes, uh, one of two ingredients rather on this. You can either use cocktail sauce or barbecue sauce. And I got some of this fine barbecue sauce. Some of this stuff that you can squeeze. How much? A half a cup, it says. Well, wait a minute. Well, how embarrassing. They have put one of these false tops on it. Laban, huh? they have put a false oh, top. Oh, sort of a little uh, kind that, of a barbecue. Uh, <laughs> I was, no, I better not say that on I the air. I don't believe you better say it's that. A, it's a device. It's for my, <laughs> uh, for my protection. And you all, it's, it's a protective device on there so nobody can come in and tamper with you. Now <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> Who wants it? Okay. Uh, oh, how embarrassing. It's dribbling. A half a cup. Boy, that stuff's ready to come out of there before you are. There we go. About a half a cup of that. And put that in now. Oh, doesn't that just look good? Mm, mm, mm. You know that's going to be just lovely. And mix it all up. A little sweet and sour is what that is. <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong? Is the uh, salt and pepper flying too much for you, Johnson? Uh-huh. Oh. oh, this stuff smells vile. <laughs> mm. Oh, come on. Oh, it does. Does it really? I don't mean to, I don't mean to throw off on the, I'm sure that's fine barbecue sauce, but, mm. Well, here we go. Now what you do is you pour that, pour that over top of the mess there, and you will now cook it in there, in that marinade for a couple of minutes. As a matter of fact, for three to five minutes. And I'm gonna turn that up because I think I need it real hot. And then, when we get finished with that, we'll pour us out a little of this extra barbecue sauce off to itself for dipping in, and we're gonna use these little bamboo skewers. 
You can buy these on TV, $9.99. We'll throw in a free set of uh, luggage and uh, <laughs> and one of the camera people. Yeah, one of the camera people. <laughs> yeah, if you call now. Right. Yeah. But anyway. If you wait till tomorrow, we'll throw in two. <laughs> now, now, Johnson and I were and using these a little here. bit earlier today underneath each other's fingernails. They're so darn much fun. Uh, <laughs> but we had to stop because he was getting irritable. All right. So anyway, what we're going to do in a couple of minutes is we're going to we're going to stick those things and put them on there and line them up and then stick them in a little barbecue sauce and it should just be simply fabulous. Theoretically. You know, why don't we look at these uh, recipes? Recipes? Yeah. While we're doing yakitori. This is uh, one and a half pounds of chicken breast. Now I went a little bit light on them today because I mean after all, a half pound of chicken livers, a third cup of oil to sort of fry them up in. The bamboo skewers. And then for your marinade, you've got your little uh, quarter cup of sugar and soy sauce. Sweet and sour is what it is, a little sweet sherry. Add a half a cup of cocktail or barbecue sauce. Now that's uh, what you marinated in. And then all you'll have to do is put a little barbecue sauce after that, should be fine. Now for the sukiyaki, Great you can song. use. Uh, for instance, here I've used the beef in this particular recipe using a one and a half to two pounds of beef sirloin tip cut into thin slices, or you can use chicken, or you could use shrimp. A half a pound of bean curd broiled into golden brown, three quarter pounds of transparent noodles boiled two minutes and cut into two inch lengths, and I'm putting those into the boiling water even as we talk. Um, some green onions, uh, a half a pound of Chinese or Savoy cabbage, six dried mushrooms, a quarter cup of soy sauce, two tablespoons of dry sherry, a tablespoon of sugar, and a half cup of stock. And uh, you arrange everything in order and you cook it slowly in a wok, starting with your meat first and then adding the vegetables. And if you want to, you can serve it at the table uh, and add more ingredients as you run out of them, as people eat. Now, uh, Lair, there's been a horrible thing has oh, happened. Oh, no. Our witch, our secretary, Miss Witch. Miss Witch. Lost her head. Oh. She went all to pieces. <laughs> no. She has some sort of ailment, but she hopes to be back with us next week. Yeah. And uh, I uh, did go back in the back, however, in her office and look at the cable that we received from the Cook Sisters this week. Uh-huh. And let me tell you, they're in China. China? They are in China. Now, you know, there is a restriction on what you can send out of China. Uh-huh. And uh, the recipes that we're going to do next week allegedly are secrets. Uh -huh. So they're supposed to be coming this week inside a Ming vase. <laughs> That's what they said. And I oh, guess we'll have to wait a while girls. before we get the recipe. But next week we'll be doing some kind of Chinese food from those two sisters on the Great Wall. They are so wild. They sort of look like the Great Wall. <laughs> they've, you line they've, them up next they've to eaten each other. right smart down through the years. I want to show you what I'm doing here. Okay. What I'm doing here is I'm taking the skewer and I'm lining up alternating. Whoops, I messed up on that one a little bit. I'm alternating a liver and a piece of chicken and a liver and a piece of chicken. Isn't that pretty? See? And Lair, here Let's are my cellophane noodles. I want to show these to the, to now, the I've, I'm Oh, okay. And because I'm going to drain them out over here and throw now, some I've in I've gotten there. two of these skewers with this. I'm going to put that on there and I'm going to put a little side of, of the sauce. That is the barbecue sauce. I'm going to put that right beside it and we will be able to dip and eat. Isn't that a lovely little presentation? Dip and eat. Dip and eat. You remember them? Uh-huh. And you just go on like that and prepare them for parties. Oh. All of them on skewers and keep them hot under the broiler until you're ready to serve them. They're just fabulous. Just simply marvelous. Well, I'm having a terrible time over to... here. Yes, I'm ready. Johnson I'm is trying to real bad. He is to not get these prepared noodles for the end out of the, the program. The out of the dish here. We okay. may have to continue this into another TV show later on. Oh, I don't think so. Come on. Let's oh, okay. see what's going to happen. I I believe it's all right. Oh, we didn't get the big we didn't get the big shrimp, but that's all right. Well, we'll we don't have time. Well, here, here have me, a skewer. Well, here, let me give you some sukiyaki. <laughs> here. It's the biggest mess. Oh, well, well, it is real you pretty. You do deserve some more shrimp. Oh, I go. hope so. Well, <laughs> that reminds me of a bird that I, well, never mind. Uh, <laughs> now, what am I supposed to do with these? Just, just peel it and eat it. Peel it and eat it. 
Well, it's impossible to mess up a mm. shrimp. I mean, you can't mess up a shrimp. Mm. Oh, it's got a nice delicate flavor. Let me try some of these waxed paper uh, noodles. Oh, they're cellophane. Here, you didn't get a. Oh, don't you didn't get throw a piece more of on tofu. me. You need some of that tofu. Mmm, it is good, Isn't but it? it's just a mess. I'm well. going to go to my skewer. we got to get out of here. All right, well, we'll see you next week. And mm, come good. on back when you can stay longer. Oh, wonderful. If you're a fan of Cookin' Cheap and would like copies of the recipes, make a $60 pledge of support to Blue Ridge PBS, and we'll say thank you with the new Cookin' Cheap cookbook. This hardcover three-ring binder is chocked full of over 930 recipes that were presented on the show by Laban and Larry. In addition, you'll also receive instructions on how to download a digital copy of the cookbook to use on your favorite device. Pledge for your cookbook now at blueridgepbs.org or by calling 866-624-8366. Thank you.